Hello everybody, it is such a pleasure to be here and to share, as Helen says, this really exciting and important topic. So today we are going to talk about the sun. We're going to think a little bit about its incredible size and visit briefly its dynamic surface. And then we're going to think about its relationship with us, with us and our planet. And this is a bit of a drawing project. So we're going to close with a poem and also some thoughts about how you might think about drawing the sun and all the different ways that you might do that. So as we go, you don't really need to make any notes, but as things unfold, and if you hear something that excites you or that seems really new or interesting or inspiring, you could write that down because maybe that will be the basis for your drawing. And when we've finished, uh, you can email me um, your completed artworks. I'll share my email at the end and I'll put them up on my website and we'll have a bit of, um, a bit of an exhibition. So I'll introduce myself just a little bit more. I'm Geraldine, Geraldine Cox. And as Helen said, I originally trained in science. I studied physics and then I studied fine art. And I'm now a painter and an artist. And I am so enthralled by nature and its imagination that that's what my work is about. Uh, and Steph, over to you. So hi, I'm Stephanie Yardley. I'm a solar scientist, as Helen said. And I work currently at, the, at University College London at a place called Millard Space Science Laboratory. And my research is obviously focused on the sun, but in particular, these huge explosions and eruptions that we see uh, on its surface that can travel here towards us at Earth. And hopefully you're going to find a bit more about these eruptions um, as we talk about them later. Thanks so much, Steph. Okay, with no further ado then, this is an, always an interesting question. How is the sun today? And there are ways that we can find this out. The first thing to tell you is, Big warning here, you never, ever, ever look at the sun. It is so dangerous. We're gonna learn a bit about why it is so dangerous. Um, it can damage your eyes. And so never look directly at the sun. Uh, but there is a way and you can go to one of NASA's websites. You can type into Google, the sun today, NASA, uh, or SOHO, S-O-H-O, and you will see images like this. And um, this is how the sun looks in the last 24 hours. Um, so you might say, well, that's fine. That's how I would expect it to look. But the sun doesn't always look like this. It does change. It changes all the time. And in fact, it actually has a cycle over 11 years. This is the sun um, as it was actually yesterday. I downloaded this picture and you think, well, that's that's the big round circle in the sky that I'm used to. But as I was saying, the sun does change. And when I did the same thing in December, this is how it looked. And you can see it has these really curious features on it. There's at least three things that we call sunspots. And we're looking in the, at the sun in this picture with the light that you see with your eyes. Uh, there are many different types of light. The light that comes into your eyes is just a very small piece of a big spectrum. So you've probably heard of infrared light. That's just light. Um, and you don't see it with your eye, but you feel it as heat on your body. And you've probably heard of ultraviolet light. People talk about that as the light that burns your skin. So the sun makes that light, but we don't see it, but we definitely feel it when our skin is burnt. So this is the sun in invisible light, and you can see these remarkable features that we call sunspots. And here it is in ultraviolet light, the light that burns your skin. So we're looking at the sun with slightly different eyes here. And you can see it looks really dramatic, particularly where those sunspots are. We can look at it in another way as well, and this may surprise you, it may even surprise the adults that are watching this, which is the sun produces a huge amount of light, but it is also a giant, dynamical, ever-changing magnet. And some of you may have played with magnets, you've got them stuck to your fridge possibly, and you know how when you bring them together, they can push apart or they can snap together, so they exert a force on one another. And we think of them as having north and south poles. Well, this picture shows you the magnetism of the sun and the dark patches are, you could think of as north poles and the white patches you could think of as south poles. And Steph's gonna talk a little bit about this magnetism, which is so important. 
and we are now going to take a trip to the surface of the sun, I think, Steph. Yes, so thanks, Geraldine. So these regions that Geraldine showed of really strong magnetic fields actually produce these huge eruptions, as you're seeing now. So this is, again, in ultraviolet light. And you can see all this material fastly moving away from the sun. And you can see this huge, spectacular eruption that occurred back in 2011. And so what actually happens here is energy is built up in the magnetic field. And when this energy was released, you get these huge eruptions. And even in this particular eruption, you can see some of this material falling back down towards the surface. And this is due to the sun and its gravity. But let's take some time to think about how big these sunspots actually are. So if we look and look at the sun and we zoom right in, we're going to zoom into one of the smaller spots on the surface and keep going. And as you zoom in, you'll start to see some of the details of these sunspots and also um, of the sun's surface as well. Um, you see these little cells on the surface. But as we zoom into these dark spots, you can see that actually these are quite massive. These are on the order of the size of the Earth. And sometimes you get sunspots that are even bigger, so on the order of the size of Jupiter. So these spots are absolutely huge. So we're thinking of really big scales here. So we as humans have been looking at these sunspots for thousands of years. And in particular, the Chinese astronomers used to look thousands of years ago at these sunspots. But this is the first or earliest known drawing about a thousand years ago uh, made in England. And this is what we started to think the sunspots looked like. And there was many theories about what they actually were, whether they part of the sun's own weather system. Now, has anyone actually heard of Galileo Galilei? So around 400 years ago, when the telescope was invented, he and a few other scientists actually would make drawings of sunspots on the sun. So you can actually see how these move and evolve across the surface of the sun. And this was the first insight into the sun's activity and solar activity on the surface. So while we're looking at these drawings, around 150 years ago, a priest and a scientist known as Angelo Secchi made this lovely drawing of the sun's surface and the material suspended above the sun's surface by looking through a telescope. But now we're actually going to think a bit about the connection between our Earth and the sun. And just before I move on, I just want to say that this is a research interest of mine, and this was me well, six years ago now, quite a while ago, at the Space Weather Prediction Center in Colorado. This is where a lot of the space weather prediction goes on. So this is the weather that we get from the sun. We call it space weather. And there's also the Met Office in England as well that also predicts this weather. So now let's move out and zoom away from the sun. You can see the sun is the small dot in the center. And you can see these explosions and eruptions traveling to this tiny dot and that's us here on earth and so you get particles associated with these eruptions and just generally coming from the sun that impact us here on earth so it's a very dangerous place to be out in space and also it would be on earth if we didn't have our own protective shield which i'll talk about in a few slides time so these energetic particles cause the aurora. So some of you may have seen the aurora yourselves. If so, you're very, very lucky. If not, I really encourage you to go and see it. And this was actually taken in Scotland, which is where I currently am at the moment. And so these are the dancing lights. These are a result, these colors are a result of the energetic particles that have come from the sun and have made it all the way here to earth. So it's very interesting to think about how these lights are actually made. And again, it's all to do with the connection between the sun and the earth and these energetic particles that reach us here from the sun at earth. And so we're actually going to look at an animation of one of these explosions or eruptions on its surface. 
and you can see it hurtling and traveling really fast se at several million miles an hour towards the earth. Now, luckily I said the earth has a protective shield, so we're protected, but some of these particles and the magnetic fields involved do interact with the earth's magnetic field. It's almost like um, peeling back an onion and then this elastic band kind of breaking and these particles entering the earth's atmosphere. And it's these energetic particles from the sun that enter the Earth's atmosphere at the poles and interact with the Earth's um, atmosphere. And this causes the lights that you see. So the Aurora Borealis for the Northern Lights and the Aurora Australis for the Southern Lights. It's amazing, isn't it, to think, Steph, just how important our own magnet is. I know, uh, we, we wouldn't be here without it. So we are very, very lucky that we have this protective shield around us. Ah, and, and so every time you guys are out, you know, if you ever go out with a compass and the needle's spinning and it sets itself to north, remember that's the thing that's protecting you every day from what the sun has to throw at us. Even while we're sitting here chatting now, it's protecting us. So let's have a look at some of the results of these this interaction. So here is the Aurora. And this is a beautiful movie taken from on board the International Space Station. So you can see that above the movie. And you can just see all these the different colours, the greens, the reds, and you can see all the different shapes of the Aurora. It's very dynamic and very beautiful. I think people in the past have sort of thought of it as, a, as an animal, haven't they, Steph? You know, like a snake in the sky or... Yeah, so in a, in a lot of uh, history and uh, folklore, for example, the Chinese and maybe some of the Nordic um, ancestors used to think there were serpents in the sky or it was a great bridge that connected the heavens to the earth. And so gods could actually come down to the earth. So there's some really interesting folklore and stories related to not just the sun, but also the aurora. So this is one of my, well, I think it's one of Ger Geraldine's favorite images as well that I've shared with her. So uh, this was taken on board a cruise ship while up somewhere north. So I think we were near the coast of Norway and you can see the, uh, there's a waiter here who was just staring in awe at the aurora above the ship. And so you can see this, these huge arcs of green above him. And he's just standing there completely amazed, probably while he's meant to be working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's an amazing we we sort of know why they exist we know it pretty well why they exist but yes but imagining back to times when people didn't know it must have really felt incredible it must have been really scary for them actually um they wouldn't have understood what was happening and it was actually it wasn't until the 1900s that we started to understand where the aurora was coming from and why it was occurring it's basically, Steph, I understand it to be like the particles coming from the sun, they hit our atmosphere, don't they? They hit the atoms in our atmosphere yeah. and the atoms produce light in response. And so these are the colours that the atoms are making. Yeah. So depending upon what atoms are involved, changes the colour that you see. Amazing. So we've actually been documenting, well, as we've talked about in folklore and stories, but here's something slightly different here. So we have um, some cave paintings and this was taken in France from about 30,000 years ago. And it's supposedly meant to be the first depiction of the aurora. So the first kind of evidence we've had that people were looking up at the skies and seeing the spectacular display of the lights. And they capture it, don't they, Steph? They capture their kind of excitement. Yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, that's a very good way to put it. You can you can see the excitement there and all the different shapes that you'd expect. And it's different every time you see it. That's probably one of the wonders of it. Different colours, different shapes, constantly changing. Beautiful display. Yeah, it's beautiful. It makes it, and I'm really actually now putting my artist's hat on, thinking, how did they make this? You know, it's almost made by a comb, comb type thing. Um, you, know, you wonder what sort of drawing tool they use. Maybe they did it just one line at a time, or maybe there was something else that they made to draw with. Intriguing. Wish we knew. <laughs> yeah. And so other things coming out of the sun, we've, we've talked about the energetic particles quite a lot and with regards to the aurora, but obviously the sun, as Geraldine said at the beginning, produces light and it's light across the whole spectrum so that whether that's visible light that we see with our eyes 
or things such as the ultraviolet light part of the spectrum that we can't necessarily see with our eyes. But it's anywhere from radio waves all the way up to very energetic gamma rays. And here you can just see this is different wavelengths from one of the spacecraft that I use on a daily basis. And that's something that scientists do all the time, isn't it, Steph? I mean, there's all sorts of what I call eyes in the sky looking at our sun. And each of them looks at some different aspect. It may be a particular type of the light, or it might be the magnetism that we've spoken about, but we choose what we want to look at. And each, each type of light or magnetism, whatever we choose to look at, tells us something different, doesn't it? Yes, uh, depending on which wavelength or what you're actually using, it tells you, it will show you different structures, different features of the sun. You're looking at different temperatures. So we try and put all this information together to try and understand our sun. And we also use these, these satellites and instruments up there, or eyes in the sky, as Geraldine said, to monitor our sun and see if any of these eruptions are occurring and whether they are going to head towards us and hit us here at Earth. Lovely, thanks Steph. And so, you know, one of the things we've spoken about, the particles that the sun sends out that makes a beautiful aurora, we've spoken about the light. What I forgot to mention is that it holds the Earth in space with its huge gravity. As Steph has shown you, the sun is huge. You can put 1.3 million Earths inside our sun. Uh, and we are held in its kind of gravitational or really, I'd say. And here is this beautiful drawing by Picasso of everyone celebrating the sun. So I don't know about you guys, and I think this is true of Steph because we've spoken about it. The sun just makes you feel really happy, doesn't it? So let's talk about the effects of the sun. And one, I think, is it's just lift our spirits. Picasso's captured this rather nicely here. And then the sun is so important it gives us all life on earth all life on earth you and me and all the plants owe ourselves to our sun and one of the most important parts of this life-giving process is the role that's played by plants and trees because they take the sun's light and they create the oxygen that we breathe and they make sugars, the sugars that feed and that build our bodies and the bodies of all animals. So this is what you've probably learned at school. It's called photosynthesis. It takes the sun's energy and we have, are given oxygen and sugars. And I always think whenever I see a flower like this, that it's a little reminder of the sun on earth. The sun made these flowers and to me, they are nature's reminder of the sun. And of course, the sun gives us beautiful shadows. It gives us our days and nights and beautiful shadows. And without the sun, we wouldn't have any shadows. We'd just be in this cold, black darkness. No day or night. We wouldn't have moonlight. Moonlight is just sunlight reflected off the moon. So we would have no moonlight and we'd have no energy. We wouldn't have the city lights because the city lights, essentially um, the origins of all of our electricity are ancient sunlight that once shone on the earth. I want to share this poem with you that we really enjoy and we think it really captures something about the sun and it's by a poet that maybe you've heard of called Philip Larkin. Here we go. Um, have a think about which lines you enjoy the most and maybe they'll inspire some of your artworks. Suspended lion face spilling at the centre of an unfurnished sky. How still you stand, and how unaided, single, stalkless flower. You pour unrecompensed. The eye sees you, simplified by distance, into an origin. Your petaled head of flames, continuously exploding. Heat is the echo of your gold. Coined there among lonely horizontals, you exist openly, our needs hourly, climb and return like angels. Unclosing like a hand, you give forever. What do you think, Steph? Do you have a favorite line in this poem? 
Well, I've actually, now that you've, I know we've uh, looked at this and read this many times, but I keep changing my mind, which is my favourite line. So it used to be heat is the echo of your gold because it's just such a beautiful line. But now I've started looking at uh, your petailed head of flames or the suspended line face reminds me of the sun that I know very well. Yes, I can see Helen. Helen, what do you think of this poem? Anything? Oh, it's amazing. I like your petaled head of flames. I like that little bit because that reminds me that. so much of the sun. I love that too. And I also love our need to hourly climb and return like angels because that's really what we're doing. The, the sun is forever. We don't even ask. We just expect and, and it, the sun is forever replenishing our, our energy reserves. Amazing. Anyway, if you want to look like that, that's Solar by Philip Larkin. So. Okay, so let's draw. So guys, a drawing project for you. There are so many ways to draw. Take an idea that you found interesting or inspirational. Of course, you can begin with a pencil, take a line for a walk, do something thicker. You can draw around something, press on very hard, create dense objects, use lines, make images like this. Use dots. You can actually mask a drawing and then take the mask away. Or you can rub, I rubbed on a spatula in my kitchen to create lovely textures. Or I rubbed on my grater to create this texture. And this is a little bit like the surface of the sun when you think about what we saw. You can rub leaves, we've spoken about leaves and how important they are. Take a pastel, work on white paper, work on colored paper. Of course, you can draw with paint. This is an artist you might not have heard of, Alma Thomas, and she made these fantastic kind of drawn pictures of sun-like images. Here she is again with this crazy title, Snoopy Sees Earth Wrapped in Sunset. And another Alma Thomas here. If you don't have paint at home and you want to do something painterly, you can go to the kitchen cupboard. I use tea and coffee and also spices. I draw with glue and then throw spices onto the glue. There are so many things you can do. Collage, draw with scissors, be like Henry Matisse, maybe you've heard of him. This is one of his beautiful collage drawings. Picasso drew with light. So you can take a torch and set a camera up on a low exposure and draw with light, which is sort of perfect for drawing the sun. And Alexander Calder, the sculptor Alexander Calder, not only did he sculpt, but he worked with shadows and that's very relevant to the little workshop we've just seen. You might want to use shadows to draw. And I went to the park, it's not autumn now, this was autumn, but you can use things from nature. So I've made a sun here with pine needles, with red fiery leaves. And it's a really like a poem because these, these leaves were made by the sun. Um, and with some yellow leaves and crocuses. So if you are inspired, please make a drawing, email me, take a photo, I'll try and take it in a good light, reasonable quality, and send me a picture and I'll post it up on my website and we'll make a little exhibition at findingpatterns.info. Send me your picture and I'll make sure that I send you a link to the little exhibition when I've put it up. And enjoy, have fun. Thank you. Oh, that was absolutely amazing, Geraldine and Stephanie. I'll leave that up just for a little minute so that people can write it down. But I've got comments pouring in now. And, you know, I don't know where to start. Uh, Daz said he loved the sun science and the dynamics. Um, Gabriella said, Geraldine and Steph, you are amazing. Don't let this go to your head, please. <laughs> <laughs> X team, I wish I was just like you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Judith said, I like this. We've got lots of comments coming in there, so we'll capture those for you. Before, before you go, though, I just must ask Steph, you had a picture from a cruise ship, Steph. Can you tell us what that was all about? <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I, obviously not now, but in the past I've been on board cruise ships to give talks about the sun and the northern lights, especially going up to places like Norway or Greenland, where you often see the northern lights. And so I, I luckily enough, have seen the northern lights a couple of times, and that's how I've done it. Um, yes, yeah, well, so that's quite a few amazing photos. From just that. amazing. So you can't say that being a solar scientist is pretty boring, is that... <laughs> and, uh, one thing I will say is, and I say this to a lot of people, every day is different and it's, yeah, I love the job. It's always exciting. And if I'm 
correct you were actually did you manage to get to the launch of solar orbiter yeah, or not so just over a year ago today i was also at the launch of solar orbiter so i just keep getting these reminders popping up on social media about the amazing place so do you want to tell us tell us where it was uh yeah cape canaveral in florida wow that sounds wonderful and what was it like when you saw it going up there into space uh, speechless, so no words really. Um, I have a video where everyone just goes, wow, all at the same time. And that, that kind of captures the moment for me. Yeah, because I mean, not only is it, it's a lot of scientists have been working on that for many, many years. I mean, probably 10 years or more people have been working there preparing. And it doesn't always work out right, does it? Sometimes the, the thing explodes. So just to see it going, I saw the pictures and there was a big full moon there as well, I think, in the pictures I saw. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the, yeah, you were right. There was a lot of nervous energy, excited energy. Or oh, There was a whole spectrum. <laughs> of different emotions there but once it you know once we watched it go and everything was okay there was so much relief excitement and so many emotions. amazing yeah amazing just amazing and something you'll you'll always remember all oh, your I'll life never, I'll never forget it's one of the best things I've seen as well as in all the lights I'm too I'm so lucky <laughs> brilliant uh well thank you Geraldine as well that's been absolutely inspirational and I just don't know how you do it because you merge those science and the arts together in a, such a creative way with all sorts of wonderful ideas. So I hope that um, whoever's listening now or listening hopefully uh, later will we'll send you some of their artwork because that's yeah. just inspirational. Yep, super so excited. We're super excited to see what you make, guys. Yeah, please send us some artwork. We love looking at it. <laughs> okay, so thank you both very much for, for coming today and for engaging. And uh, it's, it's been a real pleasure and, and very dynamic and very exciting.